Hello, I'm Dr. Andy Liu, and I'm a neurologist and member of the Duke UNC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. Part of my work at the center involves performing the spinal tap procedure. Spinal taps are also sometimes called a lumbar puncture, or LP. This procedure will allow us to collect cerebral spinal fluid, or CSF, to detect proteins associated with Alzheimer's disease. Additionally, the CSF is stored and available to researchers across the United States to use. Today, I'll be talking about some of the potential complications of the spinal tap. I'll also try to address some common misunderstandings about what happens during the spinal tap. The biggest risk for a spinal tap is the same as any other procedure that breaks the skin. A chance for bleeding or infection. We do our best to reduce this risk in every spinal tap we perform. To minimize the risk of bleeding, we review medication lists and order blood work for every volunteer. We use antiseptic solution at the procedure site, wear sterile gloves, and use only sterilized instruments to minimize the infection risk. The second most common thing that can occur is a post-spinal tap headache. This occurs in approximately 10% of people who complete this procedure. This headache typically worsens within 15 minutes after standing and is relieved after laying flat and can be readily treated with a blood patch. We can lower that risk further by using a small rounded tip needle when collecting the CSF. We also provide a sheet that discusses what you can do to help minimize a post-spinal tap headache. Now that I've discussed things that can occur in a spinal tap, I'd like to discuss some of the concerns people sometimes have about the spinal tap. The first concern people have is that a spinal tap is very painful. The most discomfort you're likely to have during the procedure is when the local anesthetic called lidocaine is injected. This is about the same pain you'd feel during a dental procedure. Afterwards, you should only feel pressure. I've had patients fall asleep during the procedure. Some people also worry about injuring the spinal cord or the needle going into the wrong place. We use specific landmarks on the body to help us determine where to place the anesthetic and needle to withdraw the fluid. We place the needle for the spinal tap and anesthetic at a point four to five inches below where the spinal cord ends. This makes it virtually impossible for the needle to reach the spinal cord since the needle is three inches long. Completing this procedure will allow us to determine if you have the proteins associated with Alzheimer's disease. It will also allow us to establish the normal values of these proteins in a wide range of age groups who volunteer here at the Duke UNC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. If you have further questions, please email adrc at duke.edu. We will promptly address any questions you may have. Thank you, and we look forward to speaking with you soon. I would like to also introduce the rest of the Duke UNC Alzheimer's Disease Research Team. Hi, my name is Shannon Casey, and I'm a Clinical Research Coordinator with the Duke and UNC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. Hi, I'm Lindsay Washington. I'm a Senior Clinical Research Specialist here at the Duke UNC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center. Hi. I am Carolina Quiroga. I am one of the clinical research coordinators here at the Duke UNC Alzheimer's Disease Research Center.